The tour started the season at the Harris Chain down in Florida. Big fish and a big win for Marty Stone. Smith Lake in Alabama was tough, but Charlie Weir was up to the task. George Cochran ran an assault on all the records at Amazing Lake Gunnersville. Sweet. And now the tour hits Table Rock Lake in southwest Missouri, and plenty of veterans are on hand making a run. Paul Elias, Mark Davis, Roland Martin, yeah. here to do battle with some younger, maybe hungrier yeah, types. The kind Guys of like Morgan Taylor, Auten, and Gerald Swindle. Kill him. Oh, Roland Martin, you better get busy, old boy. Yeah. We are set for a classic battle with a lot on the, the line. Yeah. Roland's got the lead. <laughs> The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is presented by Bush. Table Rock Lake in southwest Missouri, a beautiful place to be sure. Sure are glad we are here this week. It's big time bass fishing country, too. Along all these lakes, along the White River system in Missouri and Arkansas, Beaver Lake, Bull Shoals Lake. But right now, at this point in time, Table Rock, probably the strongest in terms of bass population, smallmouth bass, spotted bass, and largemouth as well. Well, weather wouldn't be the tour if we didn't have the weather factor at some point in every event. First day of this event, we had a big weather delay, big squall line pushing through. Only held things up for about an hour or so, but all that rain pouring into the lake and the tributary systems is going to affect the fishing. You can bet that's true. We'll talk about that in just a moment here. Sitco Bassmaster Tour gets Table Rock Lake, and hey, we are long on experts this week. Denny Brower, all-time leading money winner with the Bassmasters, joins us here. Denny, you live just north of Table Rock. Give us your impressions of this place. You like it? You don't like it? I love it. It's one of the best lakes in the country, bar none, and you touched on it with the three species of bass that it has in it. You can fish it a lot of different ways, but this week with the weather, it's throwing them, you know, it's making it challenging without a doubt. It's going to be fun to watch this one. Hey, it's going to be fun on this third day. Take a look at the lineup of 12 anglers coming into today. A lot of guys with a lot on the line. Paul Elias leading the way. He hasn't won a tournament since back in 1988, also on the bubble to make it into the E50 competition. Mark Davis, believe it or not, has not won a Sitco Bassmaster Tour event per se during his career. Two-time angler here, classic winner. Mark Davis looking for his first win as well. And Roland Martin looking for his 20th win with the Bassmasters. Also, a first or second place finish would put him into the Million Dollar Club. We know that's important to him as well. And now, let's bring in Jerry McInnes and about that water, all that water pouring into Table Rock. What's that going to mean to the fish? Well, I, I tell you what, we did have a bad rain there uh, in, in early going, but for once, I think that it is a good thing. Because I tell you what, that water starts rolling through those Ozark Mountains, and by the time it hits the lake, we've got an off-color water situation. Not muddy now, off-color. And, you know, water that is normally as clear as the water you drink is now turned into a situation where the, the fish are a lot more active and they're, they're just more catchable in that color of water. These dingy pockets, these fish that moved into them immediately. And uh, so all of a sudden there's a spinnerbait and jig bite in these back ends, and it's also warmer. Of course, it's uh, the springtime. We're always looking for warm water, and these runoff pockets like these major creeks right here have, have warmer water. Roland Martin from down in the Clewiston, Florida area. 19 wins, as we said earlier, already with the Bassmasters, shooting for his 20th here, and also a guy who's rolling up on $1 million. Roland's catching most of his fish on spinner baits and jigs, but the whole key, I think, is that dirty, warmer water. And when water dirties up, it, it retains more heat. And that's the whole key. These anglers that are finding the dirty water are doing good. Well, what's the more important aspect of it? The fact that, the, that it makes them come to the warmer water, the dirtier water, or the fact that they're easier to catch when they can't see you as well? Oh, it's a combination of things. Any clear water lake like Table Rock, once it dirties up, the fish move shallower, they get more aggressive, and like I say, the water does warm up. And when you've got water in the 40s, that's a real key. Just a couple degrees of water warming up will trigger the fish to bite. And of course, rolling a guy who's always been dangerous with a jig in his hand or the spinner bait. It really doesn't matter. He's good at everything, isn't he? Uh, Roland's a versatile angler, without a doubt. But in that dirty water, the spinner bait and the jig can do well. Well, that one ought to make it a lot easier for Roland Martin to look at possibly making it into the top six. We will find out who our finalists will be for the championship day when we return. Again, Paul Elias trying to win for the first time since 88. Roland Martin trying to make it into the Million Dollar Club. That and so much more still on the way.
The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Sitco. And in part by Bush. Triton Boats. And by Purolator. Our tour event for Table Rock Lake. We're about 40, 45 miles south of Springfield, Missouri. And I tell you what, it's third day competition. 12 anglers out there right now trying to fish their way into the final six who will go for the championship on the final day of competition. Back out to Chad Morgan Thaler of Illinois, guy who started out today in ninth place. He's done good today, though. And Denny's fishing a crankbait out there. Yeah, a lot of the guys are fishing crankbaits, Tommy. I see he's fishing kind of a chartreuse shad colored crankbait, but most of the guys are going with crawdad crankbaits. There's so many crawdads around them rocks that that's really the key color right now. How deep are these crankbaits running that they're fishing around those rock piles and so forth? Uh, most of the guys are staying fairly shallow, probably 10 foot and less. The deep crankbait bite really doesn't happen until late in the summer on Table Rock. That's what I'm talking about, partner. Oh! Right. <laughs> Over to Paul Elias from Peshuta, Mississippi. He has been around a long time. Former classic champion. And then he... Paul's got an idea because he caught 20 pounds of fish on the first day of the competition. He knows what these fish are doing, but how do you keep up with what they're doing day to day? Well, Paul has got a special situation. He's caught a lot of his better fish on spinner baits, and what he needs to catch those fish is the wind. And if he doesn't have the wind, he's going to get in trouble with his big bite. He can catch a few on jerk baits and doing other things, but the spinner bait is really Paul's key to success. Come to Papa. You pretty little brown thing, you. I know you what you're fixing to do when you see this boat. That's what I thought. Hey, 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 stop that. Yep, big old small mouth. You just saw the boat too, didn't you? Come here, I'm gonna be real nice to you, handle you gently. Would you stop that? They just don't give up. Well, Paul, you gonna get him or not? Pretty fish. I thought he was bigger than that. But I am not complaining one little old bit. Few people would complain about a nice small mouth like that, so Paul Elias breaking through, getting a fish for today, but I tell you what, it may be too little too late if he wants to keep his lead. As a matter of fact, he's already lost that lead to this man, Roland Martin, who is on a tear. Roland's yeah. in an excellent spot right here. He's on kind of a channel now, swing, steeper rocky chunk rock bank. Now he's needs... got a little debris that's washed in on it, and this is a type of place where you can really load up, and that's what Roland is doing. He's catching them in about a 20-minute period right here. It's kind of the nature of the beast this week on Table Rock. You, you run into a bunch there of fish, you capitalize, and you move. A lot of boat running this week, right? Absolutely. you got to be in those key little stretches. That's a pretty nice one. Man, look at that fish fight. My goodness. And that fish right there is going to make yet another limit for Roland Martin. That's three days, three limits of fish. And, folks, that's the way that you win tournaments. 52 pounds for Roland Martin on yet another good day. So here it is again. These 12 anglers came into today trying to make it into the final six, the six who will fish for the championship and the shot at $100,000, the win on the Sitco Bassmaster Tour. Last week's winner, George Cochran, captured five fish, but it just wasn't enough. The winner of the Open Championship, John Murray of Arizona. Bad day. He zeroes, falls out of contention for the cut. Paul Elias hangs on with one fish. You know, I'm just going to stick with what I got tickle to death that I'm still here. Alabama's Gerald Swindle, 17 pounds, 13 ounces, put him in the finals, leading the Sitco Angler of the Year race. Every guy's dream out here has ever held a rod and reel. You dream about winning the Sitco Angler of the Year through Bass Tour. I mean, I'd love it. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of money, and 100 G's on this, that'd be sweet, too, but I'm just going to kind of fish by the seat of my pants. Mark Davis, how about his day? 16 pounds, 7 ounces, and a late surge. He finds himself in second place behind the veteran. The veteran Roland Martin, 18 pounds, 14 Roland's ounces. Roland's got the lead. You know what my goal is? I mean, at least second, then that will put me at the million-dollar mark. That's been my goal tonight. 
So our field is set to final six who will fish for the championship, including Paul Elias, former classic champ who hasn't won in more than 15 years. Gerald Swindle, two second place finishes with the Bassmasters. He would love to have a win. As would Chad Morgenthaler, the young up-and-comer who has momentum on Table Rock. Mark Davis, who incredibly has never won a Bassmaster Tour event. Todd Auten from Lake Wiley, South Carolina, would love to qualify for the Classic because it's in Lake Wiley, South Carolina, and they're all gunning for Roland. Roland Martin, better watch out. I'm telling you, go pit, boy. Good luck, old man. <laughs> I'm telling you about it, I'm gunning for you. Hey, you can gun all, all you want. You guys are so far back, and I'm so far ahead, and I'm charging so hard, there's no way to catch you. And remember, boys, I'm coming across the finish line, shifting gears and throwing grab. What's the word of the day? Killer. All alive. Oh, today is the big day. Championship day, the Sitco Bass Master Tour, Table Rock Lake in southwest Missouri, and six anglers still in it, shooting for the championship. Little cabbage patch there. This little something something for the club, you know? That's one of them right there, Gerald Swindle of Alabama. Had a shot at Smith Lake, second event of the year. Made it to the final six, but faded on the last day. Also there, Mark Davis, classic champ, angler of the year champ. Looking for his first ever tour win. And Roland Martin, looking for his 20th win with the Bassmasters. I've been spinnerbait fishing a lot because with the cloudy weather and the wind blowing in, the spinnerbait was a real good pattern in some of these little pockets. But today, the jig is the deep, and, I, and I'm a jig fisherman. I caught every fish today in a different spot than I caught them yesterday, in a different spot I caught them the day before, in a different spot I caught them the day before that. So I'm gonna rock and roll and run, and I'm gonna cross the finish line slinging that gravel. This is pretty daggum awesome. Check it out, bro. We got the sunset. We got the chopper flying low. We got the rooster tails to the right. That's what I'm talking about. Start our coverage today with Paul Elias, led on days one and two. In fact, caught 20 pounds on the first day, fishing down at Long Creek near the dam. Great area. I think maybe yesterday the wind didn't blow. I think that hurt him, made the bite tougher. His spinnerbait deal didn't work. Had to go to a jerk bait. That's probably why he lost a few more fish. Just not taking the bait that good. Oh, God. Dang it. Dang it. Come again. How do they do that? Fish not taking the bait that good. That theme continues, unfortunately, today for Paul Elias. It's about 11 and a half foot out here. We're fishing a little secondary point. The creek channel swung up against that bank, and it swings out and swings over against this one right here. So this just makes this an automatic good, good little point, and it comes way out into the creek. There's a lot of shad out on here. Chad Morgan Taylor of Illinois starting out his day in Lower Indian Creek. And this is not your tournament. If you want to sit in one spot and fish all week, you got to be versatile and move a lot, right? You really do. You got to kind of fish it by the seat of your pants, move around. You're not getting bit. Try a different area. Go to a windy bank, go to a muddy bank, but keep moving it until you find that stretch where you can get enough bites. Oh, yeah. Number one, baby. Not much, but we'll take him today. Back around the horn to Gerald Swindle. Not moving far to start with. Back behind our takeoff area here in Kimberling City, Missouri. Started today third place. Seven pounds back to Roland Martin. What are you here, Booger Bear? I caught my big fish in here yesterday, so I know there's big fish moving into this area. Uh, water's warmer than it is anywhere in this creek. I think I had an end to feeding a bunch of shad blown in this area. Water's a better color right here than it is anywhere in the creek. So it's got a lot of the good stuff right here together. So you might as well fish it. You gotta wind it slow, dude. It's killing me. You gotta get it down there and just crawl it. I wanna just crash it in that stuff and make them eat it, but 
I don't like it like that. Like a slow. There's one right there. Gerald Swindle obviously working with a world-class case of the sniffles this week on Table Rock Lake. And you know the slow fishing has got to be killing a guy like him. Yeah, Gerald hadn't had a lot of bites. He's been running around the lake getting a bite here and a bite there. The spot he's on right now, the spot he is starting is where he caught that great big fish. And I know he's got a lot of confidence in it. Nope, he is too short. Whee! We got one! We score! And the first to score, got to make Gerald Swindle feel pretty good right about this time. Yeah, but you got to look who's still running. It's Mark Davis, the greatest fisherman in the world. <laughs> when you a rookie, he can give me a head start, brother. I think Mark's one of the world's greatest. He's just, dude, he's like clockwork. He 12 pounds you to death, just 12 pounds, 12 pounds, 12 pounds, 12 pounds, 12 pounds. There's a lot to be said about that, man. Just consistent as clockwork. He's quiet, keeps to himself, does his deal, you know. That's that's a cool as it gets, man, to me. He ain't scared of me, I can tell you that. I guarantee you, I will not cross Mark Davis's mind not one time today. Well, I don't know about that, but you may be right, Gerald. Mark Davis is definitely taking his time getting ready for the day. Not just the sniffles for him, he's nursing a full-fledged cold. And I know one angler he might be concerned with, though, is Roland Martin. This man right here, shooting for his 20th win with the Bassmasters and his entrance into the Million Dollar Club. We'll see if it happens. That's coming up. Go Bassmaster Tour presented by Bush Beer, our fourth event of the year here at Table Rock Lake near Springfield, Missouri. We got a lot of things working in this final championship day. Roland Martin going for his 20th victory with the Bassmasters. That and so much more in Table Rock, a big, big lake. It's so big, in fact, I wouldn't even want to clean the model that we have here on the floor. Tommy Sanders, along with Danny Brower and Jerry McKinnis, tell us what's happening. Give us an update on how that rain that came in three days ago is affecting the fish. Off-colored water. That seems to be the theme today. Off color, not muddy, off color. But hey, that did happen two days ago. Now that off color water is starting to clear up and starting to blow down the bank and get in different areas. That's the reason these guys have to move around as much as they possibly can and keep finding it. Very typical for these type of lakes. The fish will they'll uh, they'll start backing out. When the rack ends of the creek start to clear, they'll just stay with that with that stained water, and they'll just start moving their way uh, back out. Mark Davis of Mount Ida, Arkansas, has traveled farther than any of our other five anglers on this championship day. Table Rock Lake is a big lake, as we said before. It goes all the way back over the border from Missouri into Arkansas. When you get away from the dam, the farthest point there, and Mark's found a spot near where the White River and the Kings River come together. And Denny, I know at the weigh-in yesterday, he said, I cannot wait to get back to this spot because he caught three good ones here at the end of the day yesterday. Well, Mark's in a great spot. He's out the mouth of one of the major creeks. It would be good any time of the year, but now with the dirty water, Water that's moved from the back to the mouth. That makes that spot even better, and Mark's capitalizing on it. All right, second keeper of the day that we've seen put in the boat. Gerald Swindle had the first, and that's a good one for Davis. We keep talking about clear water as opposed to steamed water, and I'd like to drop below this fisherman right here and take a look at some of this, first of all, clear water, and explain that in that type of water, a fish is very nervous. He sees everything that's going on, and he sees it very plainly. He definitely sees your bait coming along, and that's not really a good situation, but when that water gets stained, gets a little bit murky, then he's not near as nervous about what all's going on. He's more likely likely to jump on your bait as it comes by. Now the wind is also very important. Well, you get on a bank and there is no wind. Again, the fish can see everything that's going on and he's just almost too nervous to bite. But you begin to throw some waves in there and you will cut down on the visibility and make the fish react a lot easier. The key to this particular spot right here, it's a creek channel edge, and it's actually where I'm casting my lure over there. It's uh, 
probably, my lure's probably hitting in 25. And we're sitting uh, on a point. I'm trying to cast upstream, which there's not a lot of current, but there is some water movement because we're in a creek. But the key is to get that lure down and come up over that rock ledge with it. And if you can do that, every, every now and then, one of those big fish will bite. And they're sitting right there on that, on that lip of that ledge. And you wonder why they call this, there he is right there. You wonder why they call this Lake Table Rock. Oh, that's a good fish. Look at the rocks right behind where I'm actually catching these fish. Look how big and flat those rocks are. They do look like a table. Barely hooked. Mark's doing something really special here. He's throwing it into deep water, bringing it up over the ledge into that shallow, that dingy gorgeous. water. Most people throw shallow and work their bait deep. He's doing something really special right now. Yes, no doubt. Mark Davis couldn't wait to get to this spot. That is a wonderful keeper going in the well. And he's putting the pressure on our leader, Roland Mark. I haven't been catching many fish before 830. 830 is about the earliest I've caught fish. So it's 815 now, so we're not in trouble yet. <clears throat> No problem. Well, Roland says no problem, but are we starting to hear a little nervousness creep into his voice there? After all, he hasn't won since back in 97, so he has not won one of these $100,000 tournaments. Now over to Chad Morgan Thaler, who, as we said before, has momentum. He's been progressing all week. I've had to crank to catch my fish. He's a crankbait. And I've been fishing mainly 8 to 10 foot of water, but I started out in 25 foot. And I just kept working my way shallower until the fish told me what they were doing each day. I think it's just going to continue to get better and better as the time goes on. You know, we've got another sunny day coming tomorrow, and when the wind blows on these clear water reservoirs, it's wide open for anybody. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, baby! That's what we're talking about right there. Chad Morgan Taylor is excited. He's got it rolling now. And from him, oh, we're going to go yeah, over to Paul nice Elias, spot. who's been missing fish for two days oh. now. Got to take control back. He does need to take control. Them smallmouth are absolutely whipping him. They're notorious for hitting short. And uh, Well, you know, what can you do? He's already got a trailer hook on. That makes it tough. He's doing everything he can, but, boy, he's getting frustrated. I was going to ask, can you take control? Is there anything you can do about it, or is it just a bit of bad luck? He's doing everything he can right now. No. Golly. Miss strikes. What are they doing to me? Hang in there, Paul. Don't go away. We got Mark Davis now in the driver's seat looking for his first tour win. Can Roland Martin get back in this thing and take over the lead? And Gerald Swindle holding down third, and you know he's having fun. Friends, we have a bath in captivity. It's very, very nice. What you doing? My chisel for nizzle. What up on the snoop fizzle? Ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. Two pimped out thugs going crazy. The Sitco Bassmaster Tour final day of a four day event, and it has come down to this. The young mad dog, Gerald Swindle, holding down third place. After a big charge on day number three, the veteran, Roland Martin, has slipped a little to this man, Mark Davis, searching for his first ever tour win. Well, this week's tournament got off to a bit of a rough start on Thursday, the first day of competition. Big weather delay right at the start, only an hour or so, but it did cut into the anglers' fishing time and was at least partially responsible for the fact that only 10 anglers out of the full field brought a full five fish limit to the weigh-in stand. Mark Davis was one competitor who brought five fish to the scales. He weighed in 18 pounds, 10 ounces on day one for second place, while Paul Elias took the lead with 20 pounds, five ounces. Day two saw a tie for second place between Roland Martin and Mark Davis, both posting a two-day total of 33 pounds and three ounces. Paul Elias hanging on to the top spot, leading by four pounds with 37.8. 
Day three, Roland Martin jumps over Elias with his 18-pound, 14-ounce stringer and holds the number one position, two and a half pounds over Mark Davis. At the end of this third day of competition, our field is narrowed to the top six anglers. And some big names went home. George Cochran, last week's Lake Gunnersville champion, coming within ounces of voting 100 pounds of fish. Takahiro Omori, who sits in ninth place on the Angler of the Year standings. Chad Brower, who led the Angler of the Year race going into day number three. Now, the top six cut, as we saw earlier, has Roland Martin on top. Of course, he holds the record for the most tournament victories with the Bassmaster in his career, 19 wins. He's hoping to get to an even 20 here at Table Rock. And again, Mark Davis has never won on the Sitco Bassmaster Tour, looking for his first win out here in our Purolator Big Bass Award. Gerald Swindle hoped this seven pound, three ounce fish would put him in the lead. But Jason Quinn, he holds on to the top spot. This seven pound, 10 ounce fish caught on the second day of competition. Quinn caught this fish on a Brian VB crankbait. It was the first fish he caught in the tournament. Let's look at our Sitgo Angler of the Year race right now. Of course, we'll look at the top of that list a little bit later. Also important is position number 25. The top 25 go to the Bassmasters Classic, and there on the bubble is Lee Bailey, two points ahead of Skeet Reese, who, like our man Denny Brower, has already qualified for the Classic through the open divisions, and they're in 83rd place. We find Roland Martin down at 83rd. Hey, he's got a long way to go, mm. folks. To come from 83rd to get in the Classic, he's going to have to have two more events, just like what he had, and that's tough. He's been there, I think, 20 five times over the years to get there the 26th time he's he's really gonna have to crank it up well, he's thinking about it because he's never won the classic but i tell you what i think today he's thinking more about this tournament that could be his 20th win this one here at table rock now over to mark davis now our leader at 56 pounds even and mark davis is fishing an antique lure he's fishing an ancient wiggle wart 20 years old or more yeah some of these old baits still produce you know you develop favorites you get confidence in them and that's what mark has right there he's got a he believes in and it's working for him. He said he got tired of seeing his amateur partners in the back of the boat catching three pounders all day long. He picked up on what they were using. He's a smart guy. He's hey, not a dummy. That'd make me change. They're catching fish, duplicate what you they're doing. How, I don't know if that lens will pick it up, but that is the whole key to me catching fish. Once you get in that green, clear water, there's no bites. There's no bites, Mark. You don't catch them in that clear water. You've got to stay in the mud. And you see this is brown, and when it looks blue or green... I think what we're seeing now is a portrait of a guy who last week, just like George Cochran, is just dialed in. It really is, like Jerry McKenna said last week, a zone. Yeah, you get into that zone, you know the exact cast to make, everything is going good, you know exactly where to pull the boat into, where to place that lure. I mean, it's great. Mark Davis from Mount Ida, Arkansas. Again, he's won the Angler of the Year. He's qualified and won the Classic. Qualified several times, 12 times, as a matter of fact, for the Bassmasters Classic and won that one as well. Just never won the Tour event. Has never broken through, and that's that's kind of a freakish thing. Absolutely. It really is. Uh, you know, as good an angler as he is, this is something that has eluded him, but this could be his time. Nice fish puts him eight pounds ahead of second place Roland Martin. Todd Auten from Lake Wiley, South Carolina. Of course, Lake Wiley is where they're going to be holding the Bassmasters Classic this summer. And Todd Auten, would he <laughs> like more than anything to qualify for that Bassmasters Classic? But seriously, how big an advantage is it for an angler to fish the Classic on their home lake? Hey, it's yeah. a double edged sword. Uh, he's going to know the lake better than anybody right else, there. but he's going to have a lot more pressure on him than anybody. And boy, for a young angler like Todd, that could be tough to overcome. Todd Auten, 38 years old. He ain't that big, but I'm in the boat. Get the ice broke anyway. Now over to Paul Elias. You see it right there. The Bassmasters Classic Champion from 1982. I know Fish Fishburne has been ribbing him a little, him a little bit this week on stage, saying he's his, his beard's trimmed down a little bit more from those days. Yeah, hey, Paul's cleaned up his beard without a doubt, but I cannot believe he's not getting out in the real windy places and throwing that spinnerbait the way he did on day one. That's how he caught that big stringer. He needs to gamble a little bit and go back to that pattern. He'd been complaining about the weather, man. The second two days of this tournament said, what happened to my wind? It wasn't there, and I I'm with you. Why is he following that wind, running that wind down? Because obviously it's findable today. Yeah, it's blowing hard. There's a good one. 
Mark Davis Big again piece. in that zone, and man, the rich just keep getting richer, and Mark Davis is just having a career day, and a day he's been waiting for for his entire career. Can he think too much about the importance of this day, about the importance of winning for the first time on tour? He doesn't want to start thinking about winning yet because he needs to concentrate on what he's doing, but right now he knows the exact cast to make. He is in the zone, like you said. He's doing everything right. If he keeps concentrating, he may get that first win. You've won out there 14 times. Is it possible to talk yourself out of a win? You really don't want to focus on the win. You want to focus on your job. Make sure the mechanics are right, that you don't screw five. up and lose a fish. Very, very important to stay focused. There's one. Here's a guy who's obviously stayed focused and thought about his job very, very hard for the last, what is it now, 35 years since 1970 and before, actually, Roland Martin. He's been at it a lot of years, certainly knows a lot of different ways of catching bass. Again, working with a motivational coach, someone he's called every night of this tournament, someone to get him fired up and really ready to compete on the next day. You wouldn't think Roland Martin would need somebody like that, but I guess anybody could benefit from that. Well, he is definitely fired up when I heard him talk about burning gravel going across the finish line. Well, he's got a ways to go if he wants to cross that finish line in first place at this point. Mark Davis really in command at this point. Half pounder, too. Yes. Now I got a five pound lead. <laughs> Little does he know. Not quite so fast, Roland. That puts you at nine pounds back of Mark Davis. And behind you is this guy, Gerald Swindle, who rumor has it will be getting married in the not-too-distant future. Could he become a bigger part of the picture? I'm not getting married at the Classic. They keep trying to tell me that would be awesome to get married at the Classic. I, I told them, I said, that's kind of redneck. They said, hey, dude, you fish for a living. That's pretty redneck. <laughs> Top six anglers share some fond memories from the 1995 Sitco Bassmaster Tour season. Find out who when we return. The 1995 Sitco Bassmaster Tour season was an incredible year for both Roland Martin and Mark Davis. Martin had retired at the end of the 1992 season and stayed away from bass fishing tournaments until the return to the Bassmasters yes, Tour for the 95 season. He quickly proved he wasn't quite ready for retirement by winning the second event of the season on the Connecticut River. And while Martin was re-emerging, Davis was becoming a superstar, winning his first Angler of the Year title at the Bassmasters Classic. The Sitco Bassmaster Tour. This is our fourth event of the year, Kimberling City, Missouri, on Table Rock Lake. Final round, the championship round. Six anglers in it when we started this day. Mark Davis came into it two and a half pounds behind Roland Martin, but Mark Davis has had that kind of day. Had himself a limit of fish by 8.45 a.m. You see, I hung up on that point, and rather than go up there and disturb it, I went around it. Got my bait loose and got my boat set up, made the right cast, and there's the reward. Chad Morgenthaler is not going to catch Mark Davis on this day, but he is having a good day, a respectable day. He's been getting better each and every day of this tournament, and now with the addition of this fish, he's going to overtake yeah. Gerald Swindle for third place. That's the real battle yes. we got going on today. Woo! That's what I'm talking about right there. Whew. Yeah, baby. That's the kind we need right there. I got enough time. I mean, it's, it's just I can't get rattled. I have to just keep up the hard fishing, you know, just really concentrate and really keep up the hard fishing. I can put together a fish every hour. If I can just catch one fish an hour, I can, I can, I can win this thing. That's all I have to do, one fish an hour. Well, he's going to have to cram a lot of fish in less than an hour's time here, right, Denny? Oh, he's going to have a problem. And I, I worry a little bit about setting those hour goals because if you get behind, then you get to rushing and thinking about it. And obviously, if you could catch one fish an hour, you'd win a lot of tournament. Well, he needs to catch two six-pounders right now as he's 11 pounds behind Mark Davis at this point. Hey, Brock's a lake. It can happen on in a hurry. What a nice fish. Okay. That's what I'm talking about, a good hour. See, if I have just one more hour and catch these quality fish. This right here sure don't look like I'm gonna catch them. I ain't getting many bites at all. I mean, not near enough to even stay at it. 
There's one right there. That's a big one, too. All right, Gerald Swindle big, big. right now, he's trailing Chad Morgenthaler for that third place battle we got going on. He's in some dirty water, and when you get in that dirty water like that, things can happen in a hurry, especially in the afternoon. Late in the day, that water's warmed up a little more. Sucker is pulling. He's got two great things going there. He's got warm water, and he's got wind. I stole him in the boat. <laughs> Hatting to keep, boys. I don't suck all day. Good God, how long has it been since a bite? Whoo! All right, in Paul Elias' spot where he's been fishing, this is the first look he's had all day at Roland Martin, who just rolled in. How many you got, Paul? I got him. You got him? Yep. How many pounds? I don't know, 18. No kidding. I only got two. You better get busy. I know. You got 18 pounds, huh? Close to it. Finally got those big smallies in the boat. You catching them cranking? A little bit of, little bit yeah. of everything. A little bit of everything, huh? I got seven pounds. Yeah, it's close again, isn't it? I'm killing him. I'm killing him. I got one fish. He's so puckered up right now, he can't see straight. Huh. Well, neither of these guys right now is gunning for the lead, but I tell you what, they're gunning, both gunning for the gamesmanship award, and I think Paul Elias just won it. Back over to Gerald Swindle. He's had two second-place finishes with the Bassmasters. He's not going to finish first on this day, but he's still got a great battle going on with Chad Morgenthaler for third place. Giant. Giant. Yes! Woo! Ha! Yes! Yes, man, I have struggled. Oh, that's a half ounce Texas crawl, Archimatrix jig, and a nice three pound bass. Man, he wasn't two foot deep. He's in the dirt shallow. That's three, two more to go. Yes. Gerald Swindle really coming to life in the final moments of this tournament. And here's Mark Davis. He's pulling away from the field, but he doesn't necessarily know that, does he, Denny? No, he really doesn't. He has to be real careful. He's catching a lot of fish, but he needs to stay focused. Up, Somebody could be gaining on him. He could be in second place for all he knows. So just keep looking at it like you're losing and work as hard as you can, and you may end up a winner. Well, the way it's looking right now, all Mark Davis has to really Not concentrate on is just getting back to the way in, in one piece with all his fish. Come on, give me one more three-pounder. One more three-pounder. Lot of activity going on in there, dude. That wind's got to push right in there. That's a bass right there, and a big one. That's a big one. All right, well, this could be the fish Come on, that settles the battle for third place between Gerald Swindle and Chad Morgenthaler. Gerald Swindle from Hayden, Alabama. I need this one bad. Come on. God, he barely hooked. Oh, Lord. I can't. Woo! That's right! Hoo-hoo! Yes! That's what I'm talking about. It ain't over. Rolling, you better be shooting if you want to have war. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. I had a chance for $100,000, about as close as I've ever been. All I needed to do was connect with a couple more big ones. And I've been getting them all week, but not today. Not today. I'm tired of being a bridesmaid in these things, I'm gonna tell you. 
Every year, I get a couple of these second places. I'm ready to win one. I feel like I need one big fish to do it, and I'm out of time. And now back over to Chad Morgan Thaler, who with five minutes left to go, has a shot at taking over third place. Oh, he come off! Oh, that was a good one, too. Doggone it. Oh! Ooh, that's gonna hurt. Oh, what a bad moment oh. for Chad Morgan. Thaler had a shot Chad, at locking no. up third place and winning that battle. Well, don't go away. When we return, Mark Davis may I be in for the most it. pleasant surprise oh. of his career. Don't go away. Huh. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Sitco. And in part by Bush. By Skeeter. And by Yamaha. The Sitco Bassmaster Tour and its championship day, Kimberly City, Missouri, on Table Rock Lake. The time for fishing is over. The time to weigh them in has begun. Let's throw it over to Fish Fisher. Oh, this is Chad Morgan Thaler. 14 pounds and 6 ounces. Holy Lion! That is a smallmouth bass, and it's the only bass I have. I guess I patterned the weather better than I did the bass. Todd Orton! Five pounds even. Had a tough day. I had to scramble around a lot to try to fish him to. This is Gerald Swindle! Chad, are you nervous? Yes, I am. Ten pounds and seven ounces! It's pretty awesome to come out and see all these people come out. I mean, it wasn't been seven, eight years ago. I was fishing these little fruit jar tournaments and to see it go from that to this, that's pretty incredible. That's the only time in my career I've ever led the points. The sick coach really stepped up to the table, put a lot of money in the name of the year. I mean, you're looking at several hundred thousand dollars up for grabs. I'm just tickled to have made it this far today. Mark Davis! How you feeling right here? I'm pretty shook up at this point. Seven! Well, there's one more guy back there. Don't forget about it. We roll to win 22, but I don't want him to win 20 today. <laughs> Roland Martin! The fast pro shot, Nicholas? Is it happening? It looks to me like it's happening. And we understand you haven't been feeling well. I'm going to feel really bad if I see many more of those. This could be retirement. There you go. Wow! Wait a second! There's not five bass in there! You are pulling the wool over everybody's eyes! 7-6 Mark Davis is your champion! And ladies and gentlemen, Roland Martin has just crossed the one million dollar mark in bass fishing! The big goal that I had this week was to get that million dollar mark. That's all I wanted to do. Look at him. We got James the son and his other two sons. Fisherman Hunter and James. This girl right here, I think she has worked as hard, if not harder, than I have. And I, I owe her so much. She's a she's a great wife. I love her to death. The twins are adopted. Uh, Carl Maxfield that passed away actually it was uh, his sister-in-law. They're friends. We heard about these boys and we adopted them. I get choked up every time I think about it. You know, we lost Carl last year and uh, how, how fast the year goes by. We named him Hunter and Fisher. It looks like I named them backwards. I think Hunter's going to be the fisherman and Fisher's going to be the hunter. Mark Davis, $100,000, your Sitco Bassmaster Champion. All week long, Mark Davis told us he doesn't think about it much, how long it's taken to break the ice, win his first tour event. Chances are he's thinking about it a lot right now, and he's definitely earned it. Congratulations, Mark Davis. Our Sitco Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. We've already looked at the bubble. 25th place, top 25 go to the Classic. The bubble man is Lee Bailey, but now the top of the list. And there he is, based on his great performance this week, Gerald Swindle in first place, five points behind him, Chad Brower. And in third place, the guy who's leading Rookie Angler of the Year, Scott 
subs, the Bush Shootout qualifiers, biggest single day stringers from throughout the tour all season long. Well, the top place, of course, George Cochran and that huge day he had on Gunnersville last week. But hey, check it out. Three from Table Rock Lake have entered that top 10 list. Stringers from Paul Elias, Roland Martin, and Chad Morgan Thaler. They're in 10th place. And Jerry, the E50 constantly changing, getting in, getting out. Who's making a move? First of all, the top 20 guys on that list are the top 20 all-time money winners. Headed by Tommy, headed by this guy, this guy Denny right Brower, here, right Denny here. Brower, yeah. and uh, uh, Peter T. Bringing up the rear there. He's he's in a good position right now. None of the 20 have changed for several weeks now, but they've jockeyed around a little bit. But but they're pretty secure. The points are where it's very interesting. 27 guys will qualify from points. And these are points that they will have accumulated over the past three years, including this year, which has two more events left. So there's still some, that's where the fun is gonna be in the points, because they're jockeying around. The, the last three places go to the Angler of the Year, the Rookie of the Year, and last year's Classic, which of course is Mike Iaconelli. But one thing in there that I, I have really noticed is, Number 18, again, is Chad Brower. So we do have an opportunity to have a father and son in the E50 when it starts here uh, in, in April. The Browers are all over this program. They we are. got a preview next stop, and of course, that's Lake Eufaula, of course, 2002. Here's your winner from Lake Eufaula. We ought to get a primo short preview right now from you, Diddy. I'm really looking forward to it, Tommy. Eufaula is one of the greatest lakes in the country. It should be red hot. We're going to hit it at a perfect time. They've been getting a lot of rain. It's probably a little dirty water down there. It's going to be a wide open bite and who knows who's going to win it. All right, thanks a lot for being with us today, Denny. Thank you. All right, great time out there at Table Rock today. Next time we'll see you at Eufaula here on the Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> we score! Woo! You got 18 pounds, huh? This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to Bassmaster.com.